Welcome to Knowledge, the bluff, bottom line, up front. In this episode, we're catching up with Nobel Prize winner Venki Ramakrishnan to learn more about his visit to Florida State University and his groundbreaking research on the ribosome. My lab has been studying the structure and function of the ribosome, which is this ancient molecule in all of our cells, in every cell from bacteria to humans. Uh, it is the big molecular complex that perhaps is even older than DNA. And what it does, it reads information in our genes and converts that information into proteins. So you can think of it as a giant translating protein factory. And we have thousands of them in each of our cells and they're responsible for every protein inside you. And there are thousands of proteins in us that carry out all the many different functions of life. Ribosomes, because they're fundamental to biology, they impinge on all sorts of things. For example, uh, the way we form memory requires ribosomes to make proteins localized in neurons. Uh, many diseases, even many cancers, are the results of ribosome regulation having broken down because the cell regulates carefully how much protein to make and when to make it and how, how long to make it. And if those processes don't work properly, then you know we have diseases uh, related to protein production. And there are many, including uh, you know, there are diseases of aging that are related to abnormal protein production and interaction. So I think understanding the ribosome and understanding how the cell regulates ribosomes is going to be very important. We, like many biologists, are studying fundamental processes. And all of disease depends on fundamental processes, you know, breaking down in one way or another. Everything from infectious disease to allergies to cancer, you know, it's all about, you know, things not working as they should be. And so uh, what the public needs to realize is many of the cures that we see today didn't come directly uh, from you know, say from somebody funding a cure for the disease. It came from completely unexpected avenues. Uh, for instance, I've just written a book on why we age and die. Why do we live for X number of years? Other species can live two weeks to 200 years. Uh, what's the biology of it? And it turns out the ribosome's involved there as well in aspects of aging. But what struck me is many of the th interesting things about aging and possible avenues to help with aging-related diseases came out of completely unexpected quarters, okay? These people had nothing to do with aging. They were not even thinking about aging, and yet what they did turns out to be important to aging. And it, it's the same with cancer and many other areas of human biology and medicine. So I think what the public should realize is that you can't predict which discoveries are going to be important. And it's important to fund a broad ecosystem of science. And uh, America and many Western countries, and, and now increasingly Asia, has done that very well. But there's some discontent, you know, why should our tax dollars go into it, etc. And I think it's a responsibility of scientists to explain to the public why their tax dollars are being well used in this effort. But there's no question, it's amazingly good value for money. If you were to put a number on how on the return on science, it beats almost any other investment. You know, so I think you have to realize that. I mean, I, I talk about, you know, I often will take my phone, you know, and uh, say, here's a phone, something we all use. There are about more than half a dozen Nobel Prize winning discoveries. Uh, that were required to make a phone possible, none of which had even dreamt of a phone, okay? Because before anyone even thought there would be such a thing as a, as a cell phone. So that's just to give you an idea. I'm always encouraged by talking to younger faculty members, but especially grad students. I even talked to a couple of undergraduates yesterday. And uh, it's nice to see that sort of energy and optimism and also all the variety of things that they're doing and their aspirations. I think that was probably one of the nicest things. Thanks so much for joining us on Knowledge the Bluff, and we'll catch you next time.